So we all know that Jesus was not white. But for a long time, the only image that millions of people had seen of Jesus was a white man, blonde hair and blue eyes. So how on earth did we get from having an Israeli Jew looking like a modern day European? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. Welcome back to Faith Talks where we talk faith. My name is Emmanuel and on this channel we answer tough questions that millennials are asking about Christianity, faith and religion. So if you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button my G, click the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the uploads. But if you're a returning subscriber, we love you my Gs, we love you. Think about Jesus for a second. What image just popped up into your head? I'm not even going to lie to you. When I think about the image of Jesus, the first image that pops up into my head is a white Jesus that we see in, for example, Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper or Michelangelo's Last Judgment in the Sistine Chapel. Or like one of the most famous images of Jesus would be Warner Salman's Head of Christ, which has been reproduced over 500 million times and it's crazy how in all of the films that come out of hollywood about ancient hebrews or about the biblical periods all of the actors especially jesus seem to be played by white men and these images are all over the world so the question is how did we get here so let's start at the beginning we actually don't have any images or paintings that were that were drawn during the lifetime of jesus now this of course is because just after the death and resurrection of Jesus, as his disciples and apostles are spreading the gospel around and teaching people that Jesus Christ is God. The last thing that they are trying to do is to have people drawing images of this God because that would break one of the commandments that was given. The second commandment which says, you shall not make for yourself any image or anything that is in a likeness of the things in heaven above. We don't have any clear proof of what Jesus actually looks like. But in the first or third century, we start to see something called iconography take place, which is essentially using visual images or symbols to represent things. Now you can question whether this is good or not, but in a way to show how relatable God is, people started to develop images of God in a way that resonates with them. So for example, the scriptures say in John 10 that Jesus is the good shepherd. So you would get images of people painting Jesus like a shepherd. And of course, they're gonna paint it in a way that is close to the shepherds that they knew of. Or if you wanted to depict Jesus as being the heavenly ruler, you might draw him in a way that looks like the rulers that you know of your time. And if you live in a time where the rulers wear togas and have long beards, you might draw them with togas and long beards. Funny enough, the earliest portrait we have of Jesus was actually painted in the third century found in Syria. And it depicts Jesus as a shepherd without a beard. Now, obviously it's quite a strange picture, but to those that saw it, he looked young, he looked authoritative, and that is what they wanted to communicate about Jesus. It's not uncommon though, for different cultures to depict Jesus in ways that resonate closely with them. Throughout the times we see Jesus looking like an Indian man, looking like an Ethiopian man, looking like a black man, like a Maoran man, like a Korean man. Even Warner Salman's head of Christ was actually painted to appeal to a young and professional audience. So the portrait is drawn in such a way that's meant to look like a professional or school headshot. Throughout the times, there have been so many different depictions of Christ. And it's not always with the aim to try and brainwash people. A lot of the time it is people's expression of trying to show how God relates to them and their communities. However, that does not make everybody innocent. Because what you also had was that as colonies and countries were trying to expand and dominate and take over other territories, in many cases they took with them and were motivated by the image of Jesus that they had. So there were many people historically who thought that because Jesus is white and Jesus is God, white is God or white is right. And anything that's not white is defiled, unclean and you know what, if we want to go and dominate them and take their land and rape their women and children, we can do it. It's a bit mad, isn't it? It's a bit mad. So for example, in Italy in the 1500s, there was a lot of anti-Semitism. So many, many painters and artists wanted to try and detach Jesus from his Jewishness. It's crazy, isn't it? Like trying to detach a Jew from his Jewishness. In fact, the persecution was so harsh that a lot of 
Jews had to flee from Italy to Lithuania or Poland around the 1500s. And it was around that time that a lot of imagery of Jesus being a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes was being pushed and pushed and pushed further. As Europeans were expanding to parts of Latin America, which they called New Spain, they often took with them you know, images of, of white deity, which created a caste system in Latin America. So the whiter you are, the better you were, and the darker you are, the worse you were. As much as there have been, mm, let's say, innocent reasons for wanting to paint Jesus in your skin color, there also have been some very, very evil intentions behind it. Scholars Edward J. Bloom and Paul Harvey actually argue that the images of Jesus fueled white supremacy and justified for a lot of people the oppression and the subjugation of Africans and Native Americans. But one thing that's always been there is that Jesus has been painted in God knows how many shapes, colors, and different types. And it's just the dominant culture of that time whose image is most popular. But that means that two things are needed. One is that people who believe that if Jesus is your skin color, that means you are better than, need to repent because that ain't right. You need to check yourself, check yourself, it ain't, it ain't it, that ain't it. Secondly, people who think that because Jesus is not your skin color, means that you're not called to submit to him or to repent. You're making a big mistake that could literally lead you to hell. So in both cases, repentance is needed. The truth is Jesus's actual appearance is, is, is impossible to pin down. But what's more important than how we represent him through art is how we represent him in our lives. When you think about it, Jesus was born a Jew, an ancient Jew 2000 years ago. When he was young, he fled to Egypt for two years. At a time when Herod had sent an order saying any Israeli babies, kill them. So clearly he must have looked somewhat like an Egyptian if he managed to escape for two years. The Bible tells us that there was nothing about him that we should esteem him as king. So there was nothing in his appearance that was particularly king-like. And then in Revelation, you see that he's described as having bronze feet and, you know, hair as white as wool. And there's so much symbolism and so much description of him and all that kind of stuff. But the most important thing is that we know his character. We know his mission and we know what he calls us to do in response. The most important thing is that whether Jesus was white, black, yellow or whatever, he takes on human flesh. He lives a life that no human, regardless of their race, could live and dies a death on the cross for people of all races to take his righteousness and be forgiven of our sins. At the end of time, Jesus is going to gather around himself people from every tribe, tongue, creed, color, to worship him at his throne. All races are made in the image of God. God is not made in the image of a race. So although it's kind of common, but also quite dangerous for us to depict Jesus in our own likeness, the most important thing is that we submit to him. If you want to learn more about this subject, there is an amazing book called The Color of Christ, which is going to be in the description link below. If you buy the book through that link, like Amazon, you know, they sort out your boy in it. So, do you know what I mean? Like, help me out. That's all from me. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Share this video with somebody that you know will be blessed by it. Subscribe to this channel for more videos to help you grow in your knowledge and love for Jesus. And until next time, my G's, peace and blessings, man.